In this module from our Hiding from Love series, we're going to be looking at the second need in our soul, separateness. And it's part five of this 12-part series. You know, the need for separateness to become a person with your own will, your own boundaries, and your own accurate sense of responsibility. Now, injuries in this part of our soul can be caused by enmeshment struggles, boundary failures, abuse, or even parental failure to encourage separation. So we, it's important for us to know and understand our limits, our gifts, and responsibilities in order to be a good steward of our talents. You know, do you think about it back in Genesis during the creation process, God created everything to have separation. You know, you think day one, there he separated light and darkness. In day two, he separated water from above from water below. And on the third day, he separated day and night. And even when God created the plants and animals, they each had a separate existence, their own boundary based on location and role, yet included in an ecosystem and dependent on each other. Boundaries help us identify ownership, which clarifies what is ours and what isn't ours. Clear boundaries are a gateway to a loving heart. You know, you think about babies, they're very dependent on their parents, especially the mom. When mom has to leave the room or leave the baby with someone else, what happens? Well, there's, there's tears and there can be some frustration and anger. Well, does the baby need to grow and mature to be able to handle the emotional fears of being of feeling abandoned or isolated. Well, yeah. And sometimes this development is delayed or inhibited for various reasons, but the fear can still be there even as the child transitions into adulthood. The key to this development is consistent love with an understanding that separation and boundaries are needed. Let's read a passage here in 1 John 4, verse 16. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There's no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You know, love is impossible without freedom. Love entails free choice, not forced compliance. Which is to say, we can't love someone if we don't feel the freedom to say no sometimes. You, know, you think about our loving, sacrificial acts that we perform for someone else should be done freely out of a sense of loving God and others. If these acts are done out of a sense of obligation, fear, or guilt, then we may not be clear about our own thoughts, feelings, opinions, values, and motivation. Remember the passage in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, God wants us to be a cheerful giver, not just with financial giving, but any type of service to another person. Let's talk about enmeshment for a minute. I, I thought this picture really captures it. I need you to be okay for me to be okay. While many families value closeness and intimacy, enmeshment goes beyond the bonds of a close family. 
Enmeshment may mean a parent centers their actions or emotions on the children and their successes or mistakes. And, attempt, and the parent may attempt to know and direct all the children's thoughts or feelings. Or sometimes the parent relies heavily on the children for emotional support. Enmeshment can be problematic because it can prevent people from developing a sense of self engaging in peer relationships, and learning to self-regulate emotions. Sometimes there's a fear of separation. When there's enmeshment problems, sometimes that comes from this fear of separation which will cause abandonment or isolation. And this fear can be experienced when others emotionally withdraw from us or we are criticized by someone as punishment for us saying no to a demand or a request. That can cause some of those negative emotions to come about. Let's read together uh, Galatians 6 verses 1 to 5 and it'll help illustrate this this point of where, where do you draw boundaries. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else for each one should carry their own load. So let's focus primarily on the principle of carrying each other's burdens while at the same time maintaining that everyone should carry their own load. Let's look at that word burden, what the Greek word means, baros. It means an overwhelming load, a crushing life event that leaves us helpless. And this picture illustrates it with almost like a boulder compared to us. So what would be a crushing life event? Well, it could be a divorce, the death of a loved one, a financial disaster. So you think of the, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, what happened to that traveler? That was a crushing life event. He, he needed help beyond himself. And that's the word that's used for burdens. We carry each other's burdens. Compare that with load. Fortion means a burden or a load similar to a knapsack or a backpack. You know, that a backpack's meant for the individual. Um, everyone has one. Everyone carries their own. So a lot of times a conflict here can come when you're in a, a caregiver position or there's some codependent behavior. How can you tell the difference? Well, you can ask yourself a couple questions. The first question is, is what I'm doing from a cheerful heart? Or is it coming from fear or guilt of how a situation may play out? Second question is, will my action for this person help him or her grow spiritually instead of promoting sin or irresponsibility? If you answer both questions yes, then it's likely that you're acting out of love as a caregiver and not falling into the trap of being codependent. Yes, yeah, an interesting picture. This is from a gallery of what was called Blurry Venice. And it illustrates this idea of having clear boundaries and sometimes not having clear boundaries. I mean, you look at this exhibit and there's nothing firm or uh, steady, um, concrete way of 
where one thing starts and another ends. It's all kind of fluid and flows. Even what we're what they're walking on is not solid ground. It it gives and it's mushy. You know, sometimes boundaries can be that way. They can be kind of blurry. You know, if, if we have blurry boundaries, we can find ourselves making commitments under pressure that we would never make with a clear head. Blurry boundaries, we cave in to others. And we have trouble speaking our minds, our own opinions, or our own values. We're blurry boundaries. We're sometimes afraid to be honest and just tell the truth. And sometimes a blurry boundary, we're unable to stand firm and separate ourselves with our own values. We can compromise. You know, what's the result when you have boundaries that are a little blurry? Sometimes we experience a lack of direction in our life. We oftentimes feel behind schedule or have a lack of control and sometimes even feel powerless to, to change. So do you have blurry boundaries? You know, this need for separateness is a need that God has designed in us to be there and to be matured and developed. Let's look at some ways where you might be able to discern, do I have blurry boundaries? Well, one is our relationships are difficult or overly dramatic, too much drama. When we struggle to set boundaries, we send a signal to other people that we cannot take care of ourselves. This leaves us susceptible to relationships with people who want to control us with lots of drama and manipulation. It should be a healthy and mutual give and take in our relationships. The second way you can discern is if you find it difficult to make decisions. When we don't have healthy boundaries in place, we spend a lot of time doing what other people want us to do. We don't know what we want or don't want, and we might not have a strong sense of who we are, what we like, and what matters most to us. Third way that sometimes boundaries can be blurry is we often feel guilty. or have a lot of fear or anxiety. If we have boundary issues, we feel responsible if others aren't happy. And we feel guilty for small and insignificant things. We apologize often for things far beyond our control. And we carry a, a self-imposed responsibility for other people's happiness. You know, a fourth indication is we feel inexplicably tired for no reason. You know, always doing what other people want us to do leaves little time for us to take care of ourselves and our own needs. This pattern is just flat out exhausting. The last one is we really, really, really hate to let other people down. Without boundaries, we worry excessively about letting other people down. So we hate to say no. If we've ever been called a people pleaser, we might need to set some boundaries in our life. Matthew 5, 33 to 37 says, Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows that you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You know, Jesus really breaks it down pretty simple. To clearly identify your boundary and understand why you need it, it's important for you to do that. Be straightforward about your boundary, but you don't have to apologize or give long explanations. All you need is to say simply yes or no. 
Remember, a boundary isn't about telling someone else what to do. It's about deciding what you will do. So no need to deal with self-made drama, tears, or arguments. And even when you draw a boundary, if you have to say no to something, keep in mind it's just no for now. It, it may not mean no forever. You remember the green light, red light, green light game as kids? There's a start line and a finish line. The leader decides when there's a green light to walk toward the finish line and when there's a red light to stop walking. And there may be a yellow light to walk slowly or some other variation. But it's our first introduction to boundaries. And if we define these boundaries clearly, our relationships will be more healthy and our own mental health will be better. Well, this concludes this module. The next module would be looking at the separateness hiding. What some of the hiding patterns come from, what causes them, and how they uh, display themselves in our lives. So I hope you'll continue with us on this journey.